Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, your government supports Hamas and uh, has, uh, unlike Western countries, um, not classified the attack on Israel on October 7 as a terrorist attack. You yourself said in November that Hamas is not a terror organization. Um, do you stick to this assessment and don't you fear uh, that this position on Hamas can damage uh, the relations to countries like Germany? Well, uh, thank you. Um, we, our foreign policy position is consistent. We do not support or we oppose colonialism or apartheid or ethnic cleansing or dispossession of any country, be it in Ukraine or in Gaza. We cannot erase 40 years of atrocities and dispossession and which have resulted in reaction and anger from the societies or the people concerned. Now, our relations with Hamas is the political wing of Hamas. And I mean, no uh, apologies about it. And that engagement has helped uh, to at least to bring about the concerns, including about hostages. We do not have any connection with uh, any military uh, outfit or wing. I've clarified this to many of my European colleagues in the United States and many countries. Although we may have some differences, but uh, as we have recognized the Australian National Congress long before the Europeans or the Americans do recognize, because I, I, we believe that the apartheid policy must be opposed. So consistent with that policy, we have taken that position that we must understand the fundamental root cause of the problem that people their houses, their belongings, their dignity cannot be plundered, and if we can resolve, they will resolve it. Do I then condone killings of children and women? No, I don't, by any party, by any quarters. That is consistent policy. But what I reject strongly is this uh, narrative, this obsession, as if the entire problem begins and ends with the 7th of October. It did not begin with the 7th of October. It did not end with the 7th of October. It began 40 de four decades before that, and it is continuing daily. But having said that, my conclusion, as I've said to Chancellor, is this. We move on. We have a problem right now. Do we discuss history? Do we discuss past atrocities? Or we discuss how to resolve the problem now? The problem now means cessation of hostilities, stop the killings now, and then the entire international community, Germany, Malaysia, and the neighbors, make sure that there's no more violence perpetrated by any group against, any, against the Muslims or Jews or Christians. They must be allowed to live in peace. Thank you. Good evening, Excellencies. My, my name is Haliza from TV3 Malaysia. Um, you both mentioned about situation in Gaza, both mentioned about moving forward and uh, two-state solution, but just how much, just how much influence this meeting can push for immediate uh, humanitarian ceasefire? What next after this meeting? Well, um, Germany is an important uh, country. Europe has established good uh, relations with Israel, and we have uh, slightly better relations with uh, Palestine, uh, both the Palestinian Authority and even the political wing of Hamas. Of course, it's our duty, and of course with the other countries, United States and Arab countries, uh, neighboring uh, Palestine and Israel, to do their utmost. We will have to be more positive in this direction. Situation, of course, is uh, chaotic, is uncertain, I admit. I don't think it's an easy resolution. It's not only, not only the tough stance of the uh, Palestinian fighters who have been uh, who suffered immensely, but also a very tough stance by the Netanyahu government. So um, we will have to endure this exercise because there's no other solution we, to stop the killing of innocent uh, civilians on both sides. The only uh, solution for now is a permanent ceasefire and. A, 
ultimate solution of a two-state uh, solution. And this uh, can be done if the international community have the courage and the commitment. I have said that sometimes uh, we feel uh, highly, uh, I mean, depressing when you, you realize there's a, some, somewhat like a moral abandonment of this case because um, there's not a quick resolve, uh, com full commitment, a consistent one by all countries just to stop, uh, I said, the war and uh, find a solution. I'm sure the international community still has the age, which means both uh, uh, in the Middle East, the Middle Eastern countries, and Europe, United States, and the international community. Thank you. Prime Minister, you are suggesting to leave history behind, but for the Israeli hostages, it's October the 7th is still the present, and for their relatives as well. So based on the conversations you're having with the um, political leadership of Hamas, um, what is the nature of your talks, and how hopeful are you that they will be released soon? Also, could you please um, tell us whether you see what happened on October 7th and the fact that these hostages are still being held as an act of terrorism. And Chancellor Schultz, you recently met the Pope who caused great controversy over the weekend with his comments about hissing a white flag, which was understood uh, by Ukraine, as um, the foreign minister put it, a, a behavior he accuses the church of now having, um, as it did at the beginning of the 20th century, so insinuating it's non-action over Nazi Germany. What is your assessment, your reaction to the comments of the Pope? Thank you. I've said, um, I stated my case that atrocities for decades cannot be erased. Um, and and uh, you cannot find a solution by, back, by, by getting so um, uh, one-sided in terms of looking only at one particular issue and erase 60 years of atrocities. The solution is not just releasing the hostages. I agree with release hostages, but there's not a solution. We, have a, we are a small player. I, I don't have this excellent uh, relations with, with Hamas, but I do. And I have told the Chancellor, yes, yes, I did express my concern that the hostages must be released. But then, uh, can you say, is that all, full stop, period? What about the settlements? What about the behavior of the, of, of the settlers now, continues daily? What about the dispossession, their land, their rights, their dignity, their men, their women, their children? Are these of no concern? Where have we thrown our humanity? Why this hypocrisy? Why this selective and ambivalent attitude towards one race and one another? Is it because they, they are colored or they are different religion? These questions are raised because there's a lack of constancy. If you ask me, yes, the solution, yes, to the solution. Yes, recognize the, right of, the rights of every single individual, be it a Muslim or a Jew or a Christian. I make no means about it. But I, of course, cannot accept the fact that when you uh, discuss issues, we only confine to one particular incident and one victim forgetting the thousands and thousands of thousands of victims from the Nakba of 1947-1948. Where, where, is history irrelevant? Is humanity irrelevant? Is, there, is, is compassion irrelevant? I mean, that's my, my contention. Do I then support any form of atrocity against anybody? No. Do I believe the hostages should be kept? No. But to, to use the narrative only in one particular issue, it's not going to be a solution. You may satisfy some pockets of Muslims or Christians or Germans or Malaysians, but there's no, and will not be able to resolve unless we are seen to be just and find an amicable resolution that is fair and just. Thank you.